Um, well, the, the general idea is that I'm, I'm lazy and I don't cook. Mm -hmm. And that's how all this started. The genesis was 1999, my girlfriend, now my wife, and I just got sick of ordering Chinese food and pizza. We really wanted something else. And it's, I just started calling all these restaurants and asked if they would deliver, and everybody said the exact same thing. No, we don't deliver, but man, do a lot of people call us. So you had all this extra supply, and the people clearly looking for it. So basically, we just started going to restaurants and asking them, can we deliver your food? We've all gone through a lot of stuff, but there's like three or four things that I went through with the company that really I look back on and I'm like, I needed that. That changed me. SARS was really what made us a success. How so? Uh, people didn't want to go outside. I want to say it was a Tuesday, I can't remember, but when it, when it actually hit, people really started learning about it and everyone was talking about it, and all of a sudden our phones were just ringing off the hook. You know, and I remember we had over a hundred orders on one of those days, and before that, it was like 26 orders, I think, was the most we'd ever done in a day. Well, for us, the inevitable is a total change of who our customer base is. We started serving foreigners. 99% of our customers in the first year were foreigners. It took us a long time to get into the Chinese market, and in particular, Chinese people want their food fresh. They're also not that willing to pay a delivery fee because, let's be honest, they speak the same language as the people that work at the restaurant. Well, I wouldn't really call summer good weather. A lot of people don't want to go outside when it's so hot. It's more like a spring and a fall in April or in October. If you have a good stretch of weather in there, people just, they want to hit the streets and go outside. And then that, that hurts us. We'd prefer a very just steady business. It's the peaks and the valleys. The model that we're working with in China is successful because of China and because of the situation we're in. If you took that same model and put it in Europe or States, it would not last. Labor costs would just not work. It just would be out of control. So imagine now in the States how much 20 minutes of labor. Although it takes you as a customer 45 minutes or more to get the food, it's really about 20 minutes of a courier's time because he's not making the food. He's getting there about when the food's done and running it over to you. So in that 20 minutes, would you say a British laborer is more than 12 US cents per 20 minutes expensive than a courier? Yeah. So then you get into $7 delivery fees. And when you get that high, you're, you can't quite be as mass market as we are. Shop是工作七年了。完了是这这一期的Shop是拆单封面。呃，在工作中遇到最有趣的事就是客人送客人家的时候电梯坏了，爬了二十几层。完了爬到上面已经累得不行，到客人门口的客人站在门口。说我帮你捏捏按摩按摩吧辛苦你了辛苦你了到肖布森公司刚来一年 店吃饭，啊，其他的说实话，有的时候也难免碰到有的顾客出去了，还有就是他们很放心我们，把钱就放在那个鞋柜上面。结果我因为看到钱了，但是东西又不敢放在那儿，又打电话到公司来，公司又
。我是零五年进入消费市，加入快递这一块，然后我是。呃，零八年的时候加入到消费市的管理团队，至今已经工作将近十十年了。然后其实说最怀念的还是当时做快递的时候，有一次我在上海商城做单子的时候遇到一个客人，他端了一杯酒，然后给我，因为我们是在做单子的时候不可以喝酒，然后这个客人一定要让我喝，我也没有办法，然后我就走了。我因为跟他在沟通上面还有点困难，然后我就走。他一直跟在我后面，跟到外面的南京路上，然后把酒杯放在我的那个后备箱上，然后他就走了。然后这件事情让我一直在想，其实虽然说我们语言沟通上有障碍，但是还是蛮有意思的。I got tons of stories. I mean, as you could imagine, you got this. There's always someone who's going to be four standard deviations away from the mean. You know, that's geek speak for there's there's outliers, and we've got them. And there's no every business has them, and I, and I, I, I'm going to tell some crazy, you know, stories about some of the weirder stuff that's happened to us. But I just hope you can include us saying, you know, these are not the norm. You know, we have a blacklist, and there's, I don't know exactly how many right now. We'll call it 50 or 60 customers who are current who we don't allow to order、um, because they've been so abusive in the past. You know, being an expat, it's hard, and some are Chinese customers,、um, but most are foreigners. And you know your life here is stressful, and things are happening to you constantly. And、uh, sometimes we do have some spouses that probably one of the few interactions they're having all day is with us. You know, and so the stress of what they're going through, and occasionally it comes out. So we've had crazy customers do crazy things, but the vast, vast, vast majority are awesome customers. This isn't us whining about these customers by by any means. With was a lady in the call center,、uh, one of our call center staff had an order, and the customer was, was quite upset. And the customer、uh, hung up on, on her and called us back, and I happened to take that call, and she was asking if I could go over to the chair where she worked and kick her. She was trying to get me to go and abuse one of the staff in the call center. She was that angry. I was like, "Listen to yourself. You're telling me to go kick a 22-year-old girl because she didn't understand what hunter sauce was with your food. Like, listen to that. That's crazy." We also had a situation where a.、Um, Lady was an American lady who was going through a divorce, and she stole the kid and came to China, and she was on the FBI's most wanted list. And she was existing here under her real name, and with her kid with the real name. And they enrolled in one of the American schools in Pudong, and she was an extremely abusive customer. And we put up with it for a while, but she would order for her kid a Subway sandwich every day at lunch, and give us 25 special requests. And then inevitably, she would complain that one of them wasn't followed. That her 12 R&B sandwich didn't have half jalapenos on the left side and no jalapenos on the right side, and she was just working the system and trying to get a free meal. And we allowed it right up until we heard the kid in the background in one of the orders, and he started swearing at his mom about. He's like, "Mommy, I don't want to get this on to, but show those f u c k e r s who's boss." And we're like, "Oh my gosh, the kid is following in his mom's footsteps." So that's when we Googled the name. Because we do that with some of our customers, and we find out that she was on the list, and we reported her. And we had another one who had a plate break in their kitchen. Pizza Now was the name of that one, and that was also a long time ago, like around O one or O two. And a customer was eating a pizza, and there were chunks of ceramic in the pizza. And the customer called in. He's like, "I chipped a tooth. My mouth is bleeding. Like, what's going on?" So we called the restaurant. Like, "Oh, nothing over here." So I actually got on my bicycle. I mean, it's that long. I just stole a bicycle. Got down to the restaurant. Went right to the chef, and I was like, "Hey, did you guys have a problem?" He's like, "Oh yeah, man. That shelf, that whole shelf, just crashed down, and everything went crazy." But you know, we never had to shut down. How, isn't that great? We just, we made it through it. And I was like, "No, that wasn't great. You're killing people out there."